All right. Uh, well, why don't we take this time to get started? I'm going to go ahead and turn my video on here. Um, hey, guys, my name is Mike Saracen. Um, I am a uh, technical support manager for Disco, um, and I'm also helping out and doing our webinars. So you might see me if you continue to come hang out at more of these. Um, and we also have AJ Weaver with us today. Hello, everyone. I'm AJ. I'm a product manager at Disco. Excited to be here. This is my first official webinar. Um, so it'll be, it'll be fun. We also have some amazing guests with us, so they can go ahead and go on camera. We have uh, Tatiana joining us. Uh, she's an amazing artist producer, um, has had many successful syncs, and also has an amazing artist project, which you guys will learn about. Um, and then we have Rob Wilcox, who is a promotions director at Polyvinyl Records, um, has some guitars in the background and also a kitten that luckily showed up in time for this webinar. <laughs> so I think we're good. Um, and I'll kick it back to you, Mike, and let's get let's get started. Yeah, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a poll right now so we can find out more about all of you all. Um, so this is just to find out who are our attendees that are here. Um, and so you can tell us about who you are, what, what your role is, and uh, yeah, just so we know what, what folks do. Getting lots of answers. That's great. I'll leave that open. Um, and uh, why don't we start, um, well, actually, before we move on, um, what I did want to say is that um, if you guys can, um, we have a, a special little um, offer at the end of the webinar that I'm going to tell you about. So if you're able to stick around for the whole thing, you'll hear more about that at the end. Um, a chance to be included in some of our promo stuff for this new feature. Um, and then in the meantime, I'm going to pass it back to AJ and we're going to I'm going to have her tell you about what is pages, why pages, everything pages. Let's let's talk about it. Sure, let's do it. Um, what is pages? Pages are basically a new look and feel of a disco playlist. Um, so I do you want me to go ahead and pull up an example? Yeah, why don't I'll, I'll go ahead and stop sharing screen and, and okay. you can pull up an example. Cool. Let's see. See my my screen okay? Yep. Awesome. So the idea with pages is that it's really it's a disco playlist um, revamped and really for a specific use case. So um, this here, this right here is an artist page. Um, it's really featuring the artist first and foremost. Um, you know, there's a there's a nice little bio here and all of the artists social links can be put here as well. So if you're on here and want to go to Big Thief's website, you can easily pull that up. Um, and then, you know, in this case, you might want to have Big Thief's all of their, their different releases here in sections. So, you know, you might have their most recent album here and an older album um, down here. And then whatever video content might be best associated. So this is a really, this is an example of uh, an artist page. Um, and then, you know, in the same way, you might also have an album page. So this would be specific to one of Big Thief's releases. Uh, the main difference here is now there's album artwork. Um, and you could also include a release date as well, which isn't on here. But um, yeah, basically the same thing, two different ways. And we have some different hand raises, um, but Mike, should we, should we get into our panelists? Oh, actually, let me just say one thing for as far as the hand raises, I forgot to mention, um, there is this QA section over here um, and you can ask questions um, in the QA section and um, I'll be there to answer some of them. And then some of them I can also um, ask to AJ later when we're in a more open section. Um, so you can use the, the QA section to ask questions for now, um, and then the chat to just kind of general chat stuff. Um, so yeah, um, if you want, we can go ahead and move into our, our panelist section now. Sure. 
Cool. Well, I mean, these examples are great, but it, it's awesome to just see how Pages is actually being used in the real world. So Tatiana and Rob have both been part of our kind of beta group, setting up Pages um, before it actually just went live. So uh, let's actually, let's start with Tatiana. And um, we'll first let's learn a little bit more, more about you. So it'd be awesome if you could just give a brief little introduction, who you are and what you work on in music. Hey guys, um, nice to see all of you here. Um, and thanks for having me. Um, but I'm kind, I kind of became a disco convert. And <laughs> what I do in, in music is kind of, um, a few different things. Um, I am, I can be just a producer and composer writer type. And then I also have my artist project um, that where I produce and write, but I also sing. So for all those various, um, you know, projects, I have to, I have to have different type of presentation. So, um, you know, as, as a producer, um, well, I guess, I don't know, I, am I getting into that yet or no? I guess this is just the short presentation of who I am. So I am a producer writer and also an artist and I also um, work in sync. So there's also that kind of part of what I do. That's a fantastic <laughs> intro. Um, awesome. Well, I when when I first told you about pages and showed you pages, I'm curious, like what was your first what was your initial reaction when you saw it and how did you think about maybe using it for your own your own work I was very, yeah I did not expect it because I always I would um, encounter disco through other people sending me files and I guess I thought of it as a file like a, this big um, this place where all these files are stored music files are stored but then when I saw the the fact that you could actually present your music on it and then also many other things that I didn't know about. Um, it was very helpful. I think that um, what's nice is not having to jump a bunch of platforms because um, you know before I'd have to think, okay, where can I build this streaming page? Do I have to go do it with Squarespace, like um, make a you know a private page that I'll send to people, or is it SoundCloud or? It's just a mess trying to figure out, you know, how for every single thing you do, you use a different service and it's a lot to keep track of. So I was excited that there was a place where my music already lived, um, that I could just take that music and then present it. So it kind of was both where I worked, kind of like my workshop, and then also the presentation place. Awesome. So... I already know the answer to this, but tell us, uh, you know, the project that you have coming up and what we're going to look at the page that, that we've made, that you've made for us today. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so the way I came into music was always through art, through being an artist, through singing, you know, that kind of initially what drew me into the music. And um, last year I was going through a list of covers, kind of trying to find a song that I really wanted to cover um, to release this year for the upcoming, um, you know, bunch of releases. And so I uh, was picking between two Kate Bush's songs. <laughs> one was Running Up That Hill and the other one was The Woman's Work. And um, yeah, and then this song kind of blew up and I almost didn't cover it, but then someone reached out to me and asked me if I have ever considered co covering it. So at that point I just was like, I'm gonna cover the song, I don't care. So, and it was good timing because at that point I was working, uh, you know, I started using Disco as my main platform for a few months. So it was a no brainer kind of once I started um, going through, okay, now I have to put the release hat on and think about myself as an artist and what are the steps that I have to go through. You know, one of the very first one is submitting it to my digital distributor and them pitching it um, you know, for playlists with the DSPs and they need a page, you know, and they need also press and whatever can make you seem like you are worthy <laughs> of, of a playlist. <laughs> well, so, um, so this, I built this and I shared, so I, yeah, I added my bio in there and a little thing about the song because 
and whatever um, um, you know previous things I've had to um, to have it all in one place. So that's you know uh, those I said I submitted that page for that and basically anyone who I want to see what I'm working on right now um, is, you know all neatly laid out. I've been sending this page to. So amazing. Yeah, that's kind of a little backstory. I just went ahead and um, shared that <clears throat> in the chat. And for anyone who asked, um, we are going to, after the panel, we're going to go through and AJ is going to create one from scratch. So we're going to show you the bones of like, you know, get in there and show you how it works. Awesome. Um, so final question before we go over to Rob, but this is, as I understand it, kind of one of the one of the first singles but you you're putting planning on putting out um a project so i'm just curious like do you have a plan or, or how are you thinking about using disco um going forward over the next year yeah so in i i will say this is a little of a sidetrack but as a producer i never thought of disco as a place where i could share stems with people that's what i used to use the bo uh, box for but um I actually now send stems to everybody and I keep through disco and I keep all my stems um, on my disco. And then let's be back to the artist <laughs> part of it. Yes, I made the whole um, folder, you know, and it's basically the release folder. And in that folder, I'm keeping everything, you know, social media videos, um, my banners and my photos, um, Pre, like, uh, you know, promo stuff, like my bio and press releases and things like that. And I'm still figuring out how I'm, I'm kind of, this is the first release of the bunch. So I feel like I might change my organization, but for now, I'm just kind of making a, a, a place where all of that lives, but then splitting each re release to like a page so that every release has a page, but then there's also a place where everything you might need for any of these releases will be. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the amazing. Plan. And then stems too, because you know, if that song, if a song gets licensed, sometimes people request stems and it's helpful to have, again, I don't have to go and think, wait, are, are they on Google Drive? Are they in the box? Like for that specific song, where, where are the stems? I just kind of know everything lives on disco and I, keep the stamps for the releases on disco as well so amazing well thank you so much tatiana yeah. excited for all to see all the new pages and releases coming from you in the, over the next few months um and now i guess let's kick it back over to you rob uh, hey what's going on hey 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 nothing much um excited to learn about how you're using pages and maybe to cue you up, you know, it would be awesome to just learn a little bit more about what you do at Polyvinyl um, and maybe even like how you were promoting records um, pre-disco and, and kind of like how your process has changed now. Sure. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Wilcox. I'm the promotions director for Polyvinyl Record Company. Uh, we're an Illinois-based independent label um, founded in 1996. I'm based out of New York. Uh, as, as simple as possible, I oversee our hired out campaigns at press and radio. My specific background is in radio promotion, um, which is also how I know Leslie James, who's in here from Hazel Street Records, uh, former uh, program director at a really phenomenal radio station. Uh, Dan Koplowitz, who's in here as well. Um, who I've done four higher radio promotions for when I was at the syndicate. Um, he's at Friendly Fire. Hi. Um, so yeah, um, with Polyvinyl, over the years, our press department has sort of changed uh, courses in how we do everything. Uh, back in the day, it was mailing a CD um, and asking someone not to leak it and punching out the barcode on the uh, CD case. Um, Eventually, we switched to promo jukebox at some point or another before my time, and uh, we realized that that just wasn't for us. We then went to Holix, uh, who we have most recently been with, uh, which we've been using directly as a you know press to press publicist to press uh, platform 
Um, but what happened was we brought in um, a new head of uh, licensing by the name of uh, Jeff Olson. And when he came in, he let us know that he's been using on the sync end um, disco as his preferred platform for sharing music with his contacts. So what I had noticed um, recently, um, I, I live in upstate New York. I recently started DJing at a community radio station up here. And so I received music from independent radio companies that ultimately solicit airplay from me. I play it on the radio. It's just a hobby, honestly. Um, but what I had noticed was that gradually company after company after company were starting to switch to disco as their platform of sharing streams of music that you then have the option to download. Um, and I think for a lot of people working in radio promotion, your most effective form of communication is person to person or publisher, or, you know, plugger to programmer. Um, otherwise you kind of use these autonomous platforms like Plan PE or All Access or depending on the radio company that you were working with as much as a few years ago, you know, they would have native in-house web platforms um, or, you know, SoundCloud, but, you know, that was something that sort of came and went really. Um, what I love about disco is that it really combines everything. And so for me on the radio side of things, it's been a really great way for us to ensure that stations have what they need as they need it. It's the same links, you know, effectively that we're using to share with our publicists that we're using to share with press. Um, and so, um, yeah, what's recently happened is we've moved over to disco, um, you know, kind of in beta mode, but um, as you can see, the Ian Sweet one here has been for radio and we can, you know, set up, you know, social links, uh, music videos, um, you know, giving people the access to download, you know, single edits of songs, but still have the option for, you know, the album version. Um, but in beta mode with press, it's been a whole nother, like, wonderful experience because now we're able to streamline what we're doing at sync, what we're doing at radio, and now what we're doing at press um, by inviting publicists to use uh, our account that we have built specifically for that purpose as their platform to now share watermarks as easy as possible. It's super intuitive. Um, yeah, I kind of just said a whole lot there. <laughs> but, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was that was really helpful, and it's it's so interesting to hear the history and how how things evolve. You know, from CDs. I was a was a DJ at my college radio station. I remember having to plug in all these different CDs that we'd be sent and you know catalog them and record them. So um, I, it's funny. My college radio station actually is now using disco, and it's awesome because they can just save the links that they get from different folks to their own disco. I think sometimes they're even spinning off disco. I don't know if that's what if that's that's allowed, but um, yeah, <laughs> it's been <laughs> it's been um, it's been really cool to see how things how things are changing. So it'd be cool to just learn a little bit more, like talk to us about Ian Sweet, talk to us about this page that you built. Um, what is this for? Sure. Um, Ian Sweet uh, is the alias of an LA based songwriter by the name of Jillian Medford. Um, she recently came to Polyvinyl after um, having a pretty solid run on the Hardly Art label. Um, and over the course of the pandemic released a phenomenal record um, <laughs> that has been super embraced at press. Um, and we've seen a lot of great things happen for Jillian over the last year and a half, two years. Um, she just released a brand new EP that uh, sort of signifies a change from more guitar driven indie rock and sort of following in the footsteps of her favorite bands like Coldplay and getting into sort of a more pop minded space. And it's really fantastic. So. Um, what we typically do in, in this specific instance for this page, it is purely for radio. Um, you know, we're, we're only sharing what tracks have been released. And because we are focusing on radio, we want to give them the opportunity to download something now that a track is out. Otherwise, typically it's, you know, we toggle it to stream only. 
things like that, or watermark if it's highly sensitive. In this case, with EM Suite, it's super easy to understand what's going on here. You know, tracks two through four make up the EP. The first track up there, the clean edit, is one that we produced in house and we had there so that, you know, for all the F bombs that are in the song, now radio doesn't have to worry. <laughs> But yep. if we're share, yeah. But if we're sharing it with like Sirius XM, um, they can just grab the normal version there because they don't have to abide by those sort of FCC language regulations. But yeah, Got so it. so yeah, it's it's a place for programmers to listen, you know, specialty hosts to listen to music, to decide whether or not they want to commit by downloading, um, taking up you know hard drive space. Uh, and it's also a place for us to be a little bit more interactive with it too, by including a music video or two at the bottom. Um, and yeah, it's it's just kind of like a, it's almost like a one sheet. It's a, it's a virtual one sheet for accessing music. Um, and it's been perfect for us. Fantastic. Well, I'm excited. I actually, I haven't had a chance to listen to this yet. So I'm excited to listen. Um, after, maybe after this webinar, I'll throw it on, <laughs> doing some work. Um, super cool. Well, thank you so much, Rob. Um, and thank you, Tatiana, as well. I think we're going to, there's been some um, folks anxious to actually see how we build this from within Disco. So I think let's yeah. go ahead and do that. Before, um, one, one quick before thing we do. before oh, we boy. do that. Um, <laughs> also, a lot of people were asking um, how to connect with our guests. So I don't know um, what you, if you guys want to maybe drop your socials or if you feel comfortable with that, but put any way that people can find out more about what you do or a way to get in touch after this. And if you want to drop that in the chat. Um, now, if you want to go ahead and, and start with a, a demonstration, that'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah, both of them are awesome. I want to connect with them too. I don't blame you. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and go into our example disco. I am excited about the example that we're going to use because I've been personally listening to this. But as some of you may know, um, Lizzo dropped an, a new album, I think, on Friday. So for the purposes of our demo today, we're going to go ahead and pretend that Lizzo didn't drop this yet um, and she's going to drop it um, or, you know, maybe we're a company that's that's representing her music. Um, and so basically, uh, we're going to come in here. This was this album was delivered to me in my inbox and I'm going to go ahead and set up a page for special. So if I already have the music inside my disco. In this case, I do. I can just go ahead and drag these tracks in here, or I could just go ahead and edit this playlist um, and put all the tracks on the right side. Obviously, if the tracks aren't already in your inbox or inside your disco, you would just go ahead and upload them onto the right side on the playlist creator. They happen to be in Dropbox if you're still using Dropbox, um, you know, or your team is, is there. You could also just go ahead and, and import them from Dropbox as well. Um, but once I have the tracks in here, looks good, although I do notice that this very special message from Lizzo should actually be um, down here at the bottom. It's on kind of disc two, so I could even add a section there um, and say, say that, put that at the bottom. Um, so I have my nice looking playlist here. I think I just want to call it special because I just want to want it to be titled what the album is. I'll go ahead and save that. Um, it's an album. It recognized the release date was July 15th. And now, um, as you're just saving the playlist, you can come into our new presentation tab. And you'll see basically everything that you've been making in Disco up until now has been what we're calling a default playlist. So this is your standard playlist. It looks great still. Um, you can add themes, um, but now you'll see two different new types of presentations. So an artist page, which again would just be showcasing the artist, um, or an album page, which will be showcasing an artist as well as, um, you know, whatever specific release 
whether it be a single or an EP or an album um, that we're going to be releasing today. So a couple of things you'll, you will notice. Um, because Lizzo was already part of the artist metadata in these tracks, she popped up right away as my artist for this playlist. If you're not seeing an artist here, that probably means that um, the artist name wasn't part of the track metadata. So right now, artists and disco are really based off of that artist field and the track metadata. So make sure that your artist name is in there and that artist object will be created. And then you can come here um, and, and choose your artist if it wasn't already chosen automatically. Um, same thing, if this has already been marked as an album in disco, we should do that automatically. Um, we'll automatically pull the album artwork for you here, but you can also go ahead and um, upload any different artwork or new artwork here. So this is the release name. Um, and this is gonna be the, the same thing as what the playlist title is. So um, we're gonna call it special. Again, we can set the release date here. You can choose between dark and light mode. The artist image was actually automatically pulled um, since Lizzo's been created before, but um, you can edit this, change it, add a new one. Artist imagery will pull automatically the first time if you've already set it up, but each image is specific to whatever page. So if I wanted one Lizzo image for this page and she releases something tomorrow, I can make a new um, Lizzo image for that. We have a bio here. I'm actually going to going to cheat. I'm not going to write one. I'm just going to pull this straight up from Apple Music. So let me do that. Um, I'll just copy and paste this in here. So now we have a nice bio. Social links. I can manage the social links. There's already some in here. If I wanted to add, um, I can add any of these. But for now, I think, you know, TikTok, Instagram, those Twitter, those, those kind of cover it. So I'll do that. Um, this will give me a preview of the contents in this playlist, um, in this page, so I can see the whole track list. Um, and now uh, I have the option to add a video. So I'm going to go ahead, I have pre-saved this link, um, and grab the music video for about damn time. It's a YouTube URL, so I can just go ahead and paste that in here. And um, the last thing I'll do is just look at some different settings. So I don't actually need my business logo on this. I'll leave that off. Contact info, um, sure, we can include that. And lyrics, I think, would be helpful. So I'll go ahead and leave the lyrics as visible. And that's basically it. So, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the things are pulled automatically, but again, could change up anything pretty easily. Um, then I'll go ahead and hit save. And this is where um, there are some additional settings that will relate specifically to the playlist. So um, I can make it streaming only. Um, I could, could also watermark it. Um, for now, I'll leave it as downloadable since this album is out and maybe some supervisors could be wanting to use it. Um, I'll go ahead and save the playlist. And then we can see what we did. Hopefully it looks good. Awesome. So this is the album page that we just set up for Lizzo. Um, has the name of the album, has this awesome album artwork, has a cool bio, has all of Lizzo's social links in there. I can easily just hit play from here or I can go and stream individual tracks. Um, this has my little section here for the, the second part of the, the page. And look at this awesome music video. I can also watch this. Um, yeah, so I, hopefully that was pretty intuitive um, and easy. Um, if the, the cool thing is, is I can easily, you know, go back. I could duplicate this playlist if I wanted to. I could edit it. I could change it to an artist page, change it back to a default playlist. Um, it's all pretty, pretty easy. And the nice thing is, is that, you know, once you've created something for one artist, all the social links travel, um, you know, imagery and bio and stuff can be preloaded in there, which makes it easy, or you can change everything up. So I'll go ahead and stop there and I'll kick it back to you, Mike. Awesome. That, that was 
very, very cool to see. Um, and um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is go, I answered um, a lot of the questions that we got in QA, but they're still coming in and I'm gonna answer a few more as they um, continue to come in, but I thought I'd pitch some of them over to you. Um, so some of the ones that um, people asked about, well, I can actually take this first one. I'm gonna talk about it more, but it asks if you're a pro member is pages included? Um, and the answer to that is anyone who's on one of our um, current plans has access to our pages feature. There is a small caveat to that that I'll get to later, which is in regards to legacy plans, which are plans that um, are sort of, we no longer offer, but um, then we'll need to move you over to get you onto pages. But um, everyone who's on a current plan has access to pages. Um, so I just wanted to, to mention that now. Um, Someone wrote, um, can we embed the pages URL into our website or anywhere else? Do you want to take that one, AJ? So right now, pages are meant to be kind of their own own landing page. So the em embeds will still be like your default playlists. Um, we are looking at ways to make pages, yeah, more embeddable and, and stuff later on. But for now, um they're 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 really meant to be like a standalone link a standalone everything that you want in one in one page cool um so uh rob mentioned watermarks and someone asked how watermarks interact with pages i thought that might be a good thing to to d discuss as well yes well rob did you want to take this go for it i mean i think we can both yeah. tackle this one yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, you can easily, um, when you're saving a playlist um, after creating it on the playlist creator, uh, it gives you the option to toggle where it says streaming only. Um, you can obviously make it downloadable or you can keep it as streaming only, but uh, under security, I believe that's the tab. You can check it so that it's a watermark. Perfect. Yeah, you can do it as you're saving the playlist. You can um, click the switch oh, and do that for now. And um, you know, when you also come um, to the share menu as well in the security tab, you can click these options. Click the watermark on, password protect, link expiry, streaming only. Right. Um, cool. Well, another question that's come up a bunch of times, and I think I said it in the chat, but I'll just reiterate um, here on video is. Um, you will be able to watch this later. Um, all of our webinars, we do record them and we'll send out that recording to everyone who registered. So even if you know someone who registered but couldn't make it to this actual recording, um, they're gonna automatically get emailed this recording. And so you guys will all be able to watch this at your leisure. Um, I'm gonna keep going here, look in to some of this. Oh, you know what? Actually, one thing that I also wanted to do is um, there, it looks like there's a bunch of people here who are maybe new to Disco or, um, you know, new to what our product does. Um, so um, the pages feature is, it's kind of like an expansion on our playlist and allows you to make these um, really sleek, efficient one page, um, sort of splash pages, landing pages that you can send out. But for everyone who wrote in with basic questions on like, what Disco does and, and how it works, I'm gonna actually direct you to this link that I'm posting right now, which is called the School of Disco. And it's something that um, one of my team members just spent a long time putting together. It's a really good handbook that has lots of resources on how to learn about what we do, how to learn about the different people that use Disco. And let's say you're an independent artist or you're in a &R, or you're a music supervisor, what are the different ways you might use Disco? So check out that link that I just um, posted for the School of Disco, and there's gonna be lots of helpful information there. It's kind of aside from um, pages, but just for a general overview. Um, let me look through these and see if I can find another couple questions. Let's see. Oh yeah, someone asked about School of Disco. Um, uh, would it be possible to make various artists pages using the, the artist feature or the pages feature? Can you make any number of pages? Um, and so the answer to that is yes. Um, 
basically it's as many playlists as you can make you can make that many pages as well each each playlist you make can be set up as a page um any number of artists and there's no upcharge or there's no higher level where you only get this amount of pages or that um, everyone who has access to pages can make as many pages as they want um, let me see if i can find one more good question for us this might be a question for the future and i don't know if you know the answer aj but i'm gonna put you on the spot and someone asked will this be included in your api that's a great question um as in you could kind of ping our API to set up a page rather than a playlist or yeah I think um I think yeah I don't know the answer to that yet but um it will definitely kind of collect the feedback and if that's something that you want definitely write in about it um we catalog all this feedback so it really depends on you know how many people are requesting it and what are the use cases and how important is it and what they're trying to do with disco so I don't have an answer now, but um, definitely we'll consider that in the future. Awesome, awesome. All right, um, cool. Well, I think um, maybe I will try to get to a few more of these questions myself, but I think that's good as far as um, answering the ones that, that people wrote in. Um, all right, one last thing I wanted to clarify that I, I did mention earlier. Um, is about who has access to pages. Um, and um, so I have this little important screen here about this. So if you are on any of our current plans, which are Lite Plus Pro or Enterprise, you have pages right now. You already have this feature. Um, we launched it this week. Um, and you simply need to start creating a playlist and go into that presentation tab to see the option to create a page. If you were on one of our legacy plans, um, then we would need to get you switched over to a current plan to have access to the pages feature. So the way that you'll know if you have a legacy plan is, well, first of all, you probably must have been with us for over three years or so at this point, um, which congratulations and we love you and thank you for that. Um, but you would go to your business settings, your billing and subscriptions page and you'd see something like this where it says Teams Basic and then it says Deprecated. There's a few other plans, one called Sole User Starter. And, but if you see this Deprecated um, right here in your billing and subscriptions page, then you are on an older plan and you're gonna hit the Change Plan button. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna send you over to our support team, which might be me. Um, and we can help you with getting you switched over to a new plan so you can have access to the pages feature. So that was just one extra little thing I wanted to mention. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that I think that we've about covered it. Yeah, look, we came in a little under. Um, but uh, is there anything else, AJ, that you wanted to cover? Are there any other remaining um, our guests, and do you want to hear from our guests one more time? <laughs> I just want to say a huge uh, thank you and shout out Tatiana and Rob. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thanks for all the wisdom and insight, um, making some great pages. And I'm just really excited to see all what our users do with this and yeah, what all the cool new pages. And I'm excited to listen to some new music as well. So. Right thanks on. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, yes. Mike. Oh, actually, I wanted to make one more quick mention um, before we go is that um, for everyone, I know there's a lot of people on here, like I said earlier, who maybe are new to Disco or were asking questions about sort of um, some of the basics of Disco. Um, we're actually going to do a little School of Disco webinar next month, early August. Um, stay tuned for an announcement about that webinar. But um, our colleague, Tim, who built the whole School of Disco that I sent out earlier, is going to um, do some classes. So we're going to do a little summer school um, for the School of Disco and look out for an announcement about that soon. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining. And we'll see you all soon.